Good evening, card fighters, and welcome back to another episode of What a Deck Needs to Be Competitive. Now, today's feature of this episode series is going to be everyone's favorite lyrical monasterio bunny girl, which is Iridescence Palette Hasseret. Now, Hasseret is a deck that was introduced to us in Lyrical Monasterio Set 3, and ever since her introduction, she's been doing kind of eh in the metagame. It's another fun deck that came out with this set, like a lot of these decks. Compared to other Lyrical Monasterio decks, she's also been forgotten. But why is that? Lyrical Monasterio is getting another set in January, introducing more support for Hasseret, and I want to take a look at why this deck is flunking in the meta right now. But before I can do that, if you guys enjoy seeing content like this, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you guys are always up to date on my newest videos coming out. Now, before we can look at what Hasseret needs, I think it's important we understand what Hasseret does. Now, Iridescence Palette Hasseret is a deck that focuses on using normal units and giving them power to the entire board, recycling them out for card advantage, and doing about four attacks in a single turn. Sounds good on paper, right? Well, the execution of this deck is actually pretty interesting. You see, Hasseret gives 2,000 power to all of your units, which is a small power bump, perfectly fine, but the deck wants you to play with this weird power handicap that unfortunately actually limits the deck's full potential. A lot of the base units of Hasseret have power between 11,000, 6,000, and 8,000. And in the current metagame of Card 5 Vanguard Overdress, where a deck can easily get up to 58,000, 63,000 power, and do more than four attacks in a single turn, that unfortunately just isn't enough. The power increase she gives doesn't even make up for the card advantage that she gives you, which essentially is just recycling the cards you put onto the field, back into the deck, and then drawing new cards. And because you're drawing new cards, you have the potential of drawing into more triggers to defend yourself with, prior to going into Hasseret again, needing more normal units on the board to maximize those units' powers and her own. Because the deck is so peace reliant on the rear guards, as well as needing specific pieces on the board, I think this leads into one of Hasseret's first issues is that, one, more superior calling. Now, Hasseret has two different forms of superior calling already. She has the grade two Clonfelli, and then the generic support from Lyrical Monasterio that lets you superior call under different conditions. I think that with Hasseret specifically, she's going to need more cards that you superior call from the deck, and the drop zone. Being able to call from the drop zone for this deck would be fantastic because it would give us different targets we can take advantage of that don't come out of our deck, decreasing our chances of seeing triggers, recycling pieces we put on the bottom, and help us get back the cards that we've lost throughout the game. A few cards that would be great examples of the form of superior calling I want for her are the two variations of Negro Lily from both G and V format, as well as the current variation of G format Canarius and V format Canarius as well. I believe having a car lets us check what we want from deck and calling it to rear guard while giving us either power and shield is a great option. Canarius does this in the V format currently. Being able to get power on the rear guard circle while also getting shield under the circumstances needed for its, you know, requirement to get the power up is pretty fair. I think that with Hasseret this would actually work out very well considering the fact that so many of our units already come with power handicap that giving us a unit that can let us do more superior calling minus the power handicap would be fair. And if we didn't want to go the route of calling out from deck, I think calling out from drop zone would be better. I've showcased both variations of Negro Lily here because I think either one would be good. We can get a free variation that lets us call a card out from the drop zone as long as it has the power handicap that our Claude Feli has, or we can get a card that lets us call something out from the drop zone but then gives another skill onto the unit that we call it out with. And the skill that Negro Lily actually gives to the unit and its G era format variation actually leads into the next topic of discussion on what Hasser is going to need to be successful. But nonetheless, we need more superior calling in this deck. This way, we are not dumping our entire hand onto the board and wasting all of our chances of missing out on the triggers we're going to eventually draw into through all of this cycling. 2. Better Resource Management Now, Hasseret has an unofficial countercharge of her deck in the form of Sylphia. Sylphia is an on-hit countercharge unit that gives you the ability to countercharge one and draw a card if her attack is successful on a vanguard. She also requires 10,000 power for a soul blast if you put something to the bottom of the deck. 
Now on paper, Sylphia is actually a really fantastic card. This card turns itself into a counter charge 1 draw 2 if combined with Hazard's ability. And regardless if the attack is successful or not, this is another card you can turn into a beat stick that has draw power with it. And while this is currently great right now, unfortunately for the future Hasseret support, it's not going to be good. The new Hasseret support is a grade 2 and a grade 1 unit that offer you the chance to counter blast one and put two cards from your hand into the soul and draw two. And then the other one lets you soul blast two and then move one of your cards in the back row to the front row and give it 10,000 power. With these new cards coming into the game, we are now putting more counter blast and way more soul blasting into this deck which means that we're going to need an extremely reliable form of counter charge and soul charge if we want to make the five attack combo with Hasseret work. Now, because Lyrical Monasterio is a part of the Bermuda Triangle clan, Bermuda Triangle over the years has acquired some fantastic resource management cards. The three that I want to demonstrate here are to Prison Promise Princess Liette, Chocho Schwa, as well as the starter L Riviere listed here. These three cards are all pseudo resource management slash resource management for their particular archetype slash clan. If we receive something like Liet, we'd be able to counter charge one and soul charge one and acquire power to one of our rear guards. And as I've discussed about the entirety of this video, power is something this deck definitely needs. However, another route we can go is in the form of a card that moves itself actually into soul or gives another effect onto base Hasseret, just like the grade zero here does. Thanks to the ability of Reverie, her ability moves herself into the soul and then gives your vanguard an ability as well and then also lets you draw a card. So this card doesn't have a cost but it gives your vanguard another skill to increase more power which again as I stated is extremely important. It gets herself a placer which the deck does naturally and then you move a card into the soul. So now we have a card that gives a skill to our vanguard making our vanguard beefier, more soul charging as well as some extra card advantage which is always nice especially in a deck like this. But if we want to get as simple as we possibly could get we could get something like Cho Cho Schwa's, where if she goes into the deck, you soul charge one and counter charge one. And unfortunately, because it is standard format, I expect the Cho Cho card to be what I think Hasret would get in good resource management form, although I don't think that's the route they should go. I believe that if we got our own variation of that for Hasret, that's extremely basic and it still doesn't cover one of the other two core issues of this deck. Superior calling and better resource management I think are the key first steps to getting Hasseret to being a competitive deck. Being able to search from your drop zone or deck, preferably your drop zone, means that we can recycle the pieces that have hit our drop zone onto the field without burning through more cards in our deck and increasing our chances of seeing more triggers. Not only that, it would put more cards back into our deck that we could potentially use as targets for Hasseret's ability, which will give us more card advantage, let us put better targets into the deck, as well as get some sort of advantage off of that. But despite that, there's a lot more we need to discuss. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, this deck has a lot of issues, but we're gonna figure this out together. Three, Hasseret needs a guaranteed finisher. Now, as I stated earlier, Hasseret's cards play with this extremely weird power handicap. That means that you have to play cards at 6,000, 8,000, 11,000 power or less, which is not common for cards currently in the other nations but in lyrical monasterio that seems to be the route they decided to go and if hasra is forced to play with this power handicap already i think she deserves some sort of guaranteed finisher an example would be like thought provoking gear fox silent tom as well as prison's new guard restrict card with its different guard restrict effects depending on if it's able to attack or not i think that this is completely fair if Hasseret has to choose between playing an expensive 5 attack strategy or 4 attacks with one of them being something that actually is scary against your opponent, then her offensive strategy would have something to actually go for versus beating your opponent down with whack numbers. Because if you don't get Hasseret's effect off, or if you don't have good targets for her abilities inquiring power ups and persona ride, for the early game, you're just swinging at your opponent with wet noodle numbers that make really awkward numbers because they're on numbers you're playing with. Like you swing at your opponent for 25,000, 27,000, but none of those are really even numbers that unfortunately hit where your opponent really gets hurt. Therefore, I think out of all of these finishers here, the grade two or the grade three is the most realistic to get. Silent Tom being able to stop your opponent from using normal units means that they won't be able to use perfect guard to stop your attack. And if they don't want to go this route, they can definitely use the prison's guard restrict card that stops both normal units as well as blitz orders from being used. 
Now, there are currently a lot of decks right now in Vanguard that have access to more Blitz Orders, thanks to set 10 and 11 that introduced the order support for a lot of nations. Denying your opponent the ability of using a Perfect Guard or a Blitz Order guarantees the fact that Hasret will have a final attacker with other card effects on top of it that'll finish your opponent. And hell, putting a power cap on it, I think automatically would be the restriction that is fair for a card such as that. Plus, all of the cards you use with Hasret's ability go to the bottom of the deck anyway, so that card is going to get cycled out unless you draw back into it or superior call it via another card effect. Giving Hasret her own finisher, I definitely think would be a huge upgrade to her offense in Lyrical Set 5. However, if she does not get a finisher such as the following, the most realistic upgrade she'll get is a new form like her other compatriots with Dress Up. Now, in set 4 of Lyrical Monasterio, we are getting more evolution forms with cards like Herminia and Forticia getting upgraded supports in this newer set. So with Lyrical Monasterio being 4 sets in and Hasret being part of the 3rd set, I see in Lyrical Monasterio set 5 or set 6 this card getting some form of upgrade. And if she doesn't, hopefully she'll get a finisher she can take advantage of. But Hasret getting an upgraded form would be extremely huge for the deck. And I've definitely thought about some routes that we can go with this. Hasret, based off her playstyle, is actually extremely similar and hold on, just think with me for a minute is extremely similar to Night Rose. Night Rose being able to give power to both the attacker and booster and then putting them in the drop zone is similar to Hasret using her attackers that she uses in the back row and moving them into the deck at the bottom. Cycling your cards out as well as a power increase I think would be fantastic for Hasret and her evolution form. She should also keep the fact that she moves cards to the bottom of the deck and lets them draw, but should do a little bit more. If I don't want to draw, I should be able to convert that into power or something else which I think is completely fair for Hasret because the nature of the deck is extremely peace reliant since the Vanguard herself doesn't really do anything. So if we're going to have a Vanguard that is a peace reliant deck and is rearguard reliant, I think we should be giving rearguards to the deck that do all the incredible stuff while Hasret is just there to support them. However, that's just my idea on how we should approach Hasret and what we should go in the future with it. However, that is just my idea on how to support Hasret in her final form and how we should move in the future with it. Resource management, superior calling, finishers, upgraded evolutions, and weird combo attack patterns, Hasseret has the most interesting and technical gameplay out of most of the Lyrical Monasterio decks. Because of her claws applying the end of battle skills, there are definitely a lot of different things you can try and sort of tech into the current Hasseret deck to see what works best for you. But I think that in the future Hasseret is going to either need three of the things I just discussed or she can get at least a new form that is extremely powerful, I'm talking like broken powerful, this deck will not see top tier anytime soon. Thank you so much for staying tuned with me guys. If you enjoy seeing this series, don't forget to watch the other episodes that we have on both Mythyark and Almagestar. Now hopefully by next week, I will have another episode up for my what needs to be top tier deck for different formats. If you want to see that, let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, this is Prime Vanguard signing out. Peace, y'all.